So the arms went to a pair of leg warmers and I cut them both out at the armpit and just left a straight top. We'll finish them in, a, in this tutorial. And then for the mittens, I used the waistband as the top to hold it on your arm or on your wrist and I made a pair of them out of the bottom portion of the sweater. So make sure you put your hand down as a gauge for your pattern and that you leave plenty of space for seam allowances and for wiggle room inside the glove. And then I put her gloves kind of far up her forearm but you can choose however high up you want them to go up your arm. And then for the hat, I basically used like a baby's bib pattern almost and left the binding of the neck hole in the sweater that will be the portion that holds the hat onto your forehead. So get your pieces cut out. For my gloves, I cut out one and then I used it as a pattern for the other one. I didn't trace them both because I wanted them to match exactly. Then I pinned them down and make sure when you go to cut them out that both um, that the bottom pieces of your gloves are lined up because sometimes the sweater can tuck up in the back and then it won't match on your wrist. So get them how you would like them, get them pinned, and like I said, you can only see one glove here drawn on because I'm just going to cut it out and use the other one as a gauge. And I think I cut a little, I drew a little too wide right at the wrist, and so notice how I cut my line off and I'm tapering them in. It's not an exact science here. You can just keep measuring, and if you made them too big in the first place, then you can go ahead and Tighten up that seam allowance. Better to do that than make them too small in the first place. So after you cut out your mitten, use it as a gauge for the other one, and then set your mittens aside and we'll get back to them. Now make sure for the arms, for those leg warmers, I left the bottom edge just exactly how it was, and I'm cutting straight across here at the armpit, and I'll cut both of them, both sleeves off, and set them aside until we start to sew. For the hat, I'm just cutting out that shape and it won't line up. So if you are able to see this upside down, the neck hole, this is the back. And so I cut off the tag and the neck hole in the front scoops down lower. That's just fine. So turn the hat um, right sides together and head over to the sewing machine. See, this is the front of the sweater. Now for my hat, you can see where it scoops down. Then I'm going to take a generous seam allowance because I don't want this to rip out. Put it inside your machine and make sure you backstitch and then sew around the perimeter of the hat. Backstitch on the other end. When you get there, and it is that easy, turn it right side out, the hat's finished. So set that aside, get out your mittens, make sure they're pinned together because again, you want your wrists to line up exactly where they should. And just sew down a ways. I'll show you how to do the thumb because it can be a little tricky. Don't forget to backstitch. And then continue down that side and as you get to the rounded part of the thumb, you have to take it a little bit slower. So put your needle down, lift your foot, pivot just a little bit, take a couple of stitches, you'll be able to tell when you need to lift and rotate again. And keep pivoting that thumb to go around the rounded part. And then come in until you're at the point between the thumb and fingers and you want to come in as far as the seam allowance you've been making so that when you put your foot down and you're going up the fingers now, you have the same seam allowance on the edge. And keep circling around the top of those mittens and from here on out it's easy. The round, the curvature of the finger parts aren't as tight as that thumb so you shouldn't need to stop and put your needle down and pivot. You ought to be able to just continue right through until the wrist and then back stitch. Then it needs a relief stitch or a relief cut made right between the thumb and fingers. Just give it a little snip otherwise the gloves won't lay right when you turn them right side out. Make certain you don't snip your seam. And then I turned my gloves right side out and I want to put lace on mine to embellish them a little bit. So I took some eyelet that I just had lying around and I'm going to stitch that on the top. And I barely took the finished edge of the lace and stuck it under the previous wrist, well, I guess the new wrist on these and I'm just stitching it along. You can pin it on if you want to, but it's faster for me not to. And after I trimmed the whole wrist, I'm back to the other side and I'm going to lift up my foot, make sure my needle's down, take my lace and cross it over the under, the under strand just so that I can bring it down in the front, backstitch a little bit. I'm going to pivot with my needle, turn my mitten all the way around. I'm coming down about two inches because I think it's cute. You don't have to do any of this or this is, if you do like it, then this is how I did it. I'm going to roll the end of my lace over lay it down and then I will turn my mitten straight 
in the machine and stitch it down right there. And then I hand sewed some buttons on mine just for fun. And this is how I did the top of the mitten and the leg warmer. And then this is the bottom of the leg warmer that used to be the armpit. And I'm just making a casing and sliding in some very thin elastic because I'm afraid if I leave it, it will over time get really stretched out and start to fray. So I just want to tighten it up so it stays cute around the ankle. So fold it over and then fold it over again to make this casing. Leave a one inch opening so that we can thread the elastic through when you get back around. And I've cut my elastic so that it's a comfortable tightness around the ankle. Put a bobby, or not a bobby, a safety pin through the end. I'm so used to doing hairstyles. Then feed that safety pin in where you left the casing open in that inch gap. And then I push it with my thumb and I start to gather the fabric over the safety pin between my two fingers and then I pinch it hard with my left hand as I pull it through on my right to spread out that elastic. So watch, I'll push it with my thumb and thread that safety pin between my thumb and forefinger and just keep spreading it through my casing until I have both ends out and I cross them over the top of each other and I do a forward and a back stitch over those elastics to hold them together. Snip your strings and then if you just pull where you did your casing, the elastic will flatten out and it will go right inside and then put it back under your machine and stitch your casing shut over that inch gap that you left open. And then you want to, after you've clipped your threads, spread out the elastic inside so it's even and you have a really cute set of leg warmers, mittens and a hat.